wild seafood from the pristine waters of British Columbia is considered to be world class and second to none in terms of quality and taste. The wild seafood industry in BC is well established, producing an impressive array of seafood products with over 80 different species of fin fish, shellfish, and marine plants from both freshwater and marine environments. Those who work in the BC commercial fishing industry are fully committed to the sustainability of this invaluable resource. Their commitment to safety and training on and offshore is their way of ensuring their sustainability and ensuring a safe return home. Sustainability is very important with, with what we do nowadays. People want to know where their food is coming from. Is it harvested in a sustainable manner? But also to do these things in a safe manner so that the crew's coming home is sustainable for the crew and all the family members and everything that's involved. Fishing sustainability is definitely important to me. Um, there's an authenticity to what you're doing and what you're catching that is like no other. Um, I can't describe that in any other job, the feeling that you get from that you're putting something um, real uh, onto people's plates. You come home and we do local fish sales and you see people, they are so happy and they thank you for, for doing it. That makes it all worth it. I'd love to see the future of fishing be sustainable so one day I could pass it down to uh, my son or daughter. Wild capture fisheries in British Columbia are significant contributors to the province's economy and they are the social fabric of many small towns and First Nations communities providing well-paid, full-time and seasonal work. This plant's been established here for the last 28 years, I believe, somewhere in that neighborhood. And uh, we've been a, um, a very important, integral part of the community here. We do provide about, um, about 35 to 50 uh, seasonal jobs here. We are one of the biggest uh, employers in the town of Masset. I'm the floor boss here. I run the forklift probably 90% of the time. When a boat pulls up, we help them pull in, we dock them, uh, we greet them as they come in, we see if they need anything before we start to offload them. The herring fishery is a huge part of our business. We rely on it every springtime like this. It kind of kickstarts our year. You know, we employ lots of people in, around this area. Our retail store is very good. I mean, it, of course, we buy all fresh right from the boats and that, so everything we supply, it's all wild. Safety is our number one priority. We actually pride ourselves in very low injuries and that, and, and as you can see, everybody's got to wear their best. They got to be out of the way. So we just try to keep it very clear and get the job done. The men and women in the BC commercial fishing industry often work long and hard in one of the most dangerous and challenging occupations in the world. The sustainability of a healthy commercial fishing industry in BC requires the seafood harvesting and processing workforce to recognize, understand, and minimize the safety hazards. While many vessels in the commercial fishing fleet are old and some equipment obsolete, there is a new, younger generation entering the workforce, seeking to build for themselves a stable, safe and rewarding career in the profession. In many ways, these young people have a choice. Follow the status quo and fish as others have for decades, accepting unnecessary risks with little or no planning for the dangerous consequences, or adopt a new and different approach to work on the water. This is the choice facing every fisherman on the BC coast. In British Columbia, the choice to work safely at sea has been made easier by Fish Safe, an industry-funded safety organization whose sole purpose is to provide fishermen with help using tools, training, and knowledge to get home safely. What would happen to you if you cut your hand? I work with the fishermen bringing safety procedures to them. Get them thinking about what if. Making plans, working with them to 
build a procedure for any incident that possibly could happen and identifying risk. Likelihood, severity. The more likely it is to happen, the more severe the injury, that's what we want to identify. What we've learned is if you can reduce a risk, potentially eliminate it, then maybe you don't have to respond to that fire or that man overboard. What's your plan? And every vessel is different, so every plan is different. Addressing risk means working in three key areas. Practicing emergency drills regularly. Conducting a thorough safety equipment orientation. And documenting emergency procedures. Practicing drills is all about building muscle memory before an emergency occurs. During the safest catch, this is often where the most fun is had. <laughs> I like the safest catch program because it's more of a, a hands-on, on the vessel training system with a fun spin to it. Safest catch training also provides an opportunity to experience those aha and uh-oh moments. This new philosophy puts safety first when on the job and places priority upon reducing the chance of a serious accident while at sea. So we want to uh, minimize risk of falling overboard when we're setting and some of the things... The Safest Catch program definitely uh, opened my eyes to exactly what to do, the exact procedures, where to put myself, um, where, what I should expect from my crew members, what I should expect from my skipper. But what are we going to do if it actually happens? It's definitely uh, been kind of uh, a tool that it becomes so natural to you that that safety is just becomes part of your job. Built around the concept of fishermen helping fishermen, Fish Safe developed the Safest Catch program in 2009 when they began deploying experienced, specially trained BC fishermen to work as safety advisors and to help other fishermen with emergency preparedness on board their vessels. In 2018, there are now more than 2,500 fishermen working on more than 1,000 vessels who have participated in this one-of-a-kind program. What other industry is there that you don't have a safety orientation before you start that job? What is good though is the younger generation realizes that. And a lot of that comes from a shift in even certification. You can't get on a boat now if you don't have some basic certification is something as simple as a marine emergency duties. You know, years ago, it was a real push to get guys to recognize their role and responsibility in safety, and now they own it. There was a time where Fish Safe wasn't as well received, and now they want to do it. They're phoning us, they're stopping me, they're asking, they want to put their immersion suits on. They want to have conversations about their choice in personal flotation devices. It's something in the last few years has been brought to our attention a lot through the Fish Safe program. You don't realize how how important it is to wear PFDs and stuff. You start looking at the facts and realizing like how quick and easy it is to drown or get hypothermia. And... There's always a challenge with fishermen and PFDs. Finding one that a fisherman is comfortable in and to one that he's going to wear and then one that meets regulation. There seems to be a, a really wide span there, but there has been a shift. I recently worked with the Roe Herring fleet and I found PFDs. Everybody had PFDs. One of the problems was cartridges. A lot of the PFDs we wear now that are comfortable that guys like are the inflatables with the hydrostatic release. What we're not doing is we're not taking a look and seeing there's a little box inside here that says red or green. Green is good, red is no good. But we go and we put on this life-saving equipment not realizing that it has the potential to fail if we don't do our part and take a look and do some maintenance. Spend any amount of time on the water and you're likely to hear the word freedom. When you get up early in the morning, you're on the water and in one of the most beautiful places on earth. Nothing brings the sense of being alive and aware to help rebuild our personal reserves like a day spent interacting with nature. 
experiencing nature firsthand, like whales and dolphins. It's just one of those things that you would never have at any other workplace. You are made aware of each minute, what is happening right now and what is ahead. It's one of those things that you, you need to see in 2020, you need to feel, you need to touch. It's, it's a rush. Fishing has a way of fulfilling an age-old need of pursuing and catching. The thrill lies in the challenges. Pretty much you battle, you, you, you go in a battle, yeah. Mental strength sometimes can be more important than physical strength. Commercial fishing gives you the opportunity to sharpen both. But fishing is a really hard job. And if you've come from a place where you didn't have to work so hard for your money, you might not be all that interested in fishing. Fishing offers the chance to improve your self-esteem through respect for the environment, mastering outdoor skills, such as tying knots, chart reading, how to anchor, and how to read the wind and the weather. You know, you're not sitting in a cubicle, staring at a sheet, you know, punching in numbers into a computer. It's the industry, <laughs> the people, the lifestyle. At the end of every season, you walk away with a better understanding of the world around you. It's not just a job, it's a way of life. To find out more, visit our job board at fishsafebc.com.